In Bolivia, opposition Senator Yanina Añez has declared herself interim president following the resignation of former leader Evo Morales. The Constitutional Court has endorsed Añez even though there were not enough lawmakers present in Congress to appoint her. Morales has gone into exile in Mexico. He's condemned Añez, accusing her of instigating a coup. The road to stability in Bolivia is paved with difficulties. The streets of the capital remain blocked, a metaphor for the constitutional barricades that the Legislative Assembly must overcome in order to restore the state after a wave of resignations that followed Evo Morales' departure. The hitherto now opposition faces twin difficulties to form a government, but to do so with a minority. The president has to institutionalize the state, give functionality to the state. That's the offer to the country. The deputies and senators working together have to offer the country stability within the framework of the constitution. We don't want to see any mixing of political or personal interests. Right now, it's important that people in Bolivia have stability and peace. Restore certainty to all Bolivians who fought in defense of freedom of expression. Stability. We want to return to democracy. We want to restore the rule of law, the independence of the state's institutions, and we want to live in a society where constitutional rights and guarantees are respected. We want to return to legality and roll back all of the deinstitutionalization that's been generated. Guarantee clean elections and hand over the mandate to the next democratically elected president. But achieving such goals will require much more than just good wishes. For Luis Vázquez Falamoro, a constitutional lawyer, the biggest challenge is pacifying the country, an issue that requires literally hundreds of urgent decisions. Institutions such as the armed forces and the police and their new commanders must be constituted. Basically, some 100 or 150 officials must be appointed as soon as possible in order to get the Bolivian state back on its feet, even if only a little. There are many tasks and too many challenges. It is a view shared by former Bolivian President Jorge Tuto Quiroga. The situation, he says, presents a historic precedent for Bolivia and Latin America. The lesson Bolivia will learn is that a government that takes a step outside the rule of the law must be condemned by the Bolivian people and the international community. Because when you allow the first violation, the second and third come too, and they grow, they become a snowball. While the Legislative Assembly is debating how to stabilize the country, fear still persists in Bolivia. The empty streets and the closed shops show that restoring peace and confidence to the citizens goes beyond letters of resignation and interim presidencies. Let's get some analysis now from Natasha Lindstedt of Essex University in the UK. She's a professor of government and an expert on authoritarian regimes. Thanks for being with us this morning, Professor. Uh, first of all, we've got an opposition politician, Yanina Añez, uh, declaring herself interim president of Bolivia, while the former president, Evo Morales, is calling it a coup. How do you see this playing out? Well... Hopefully, they're going to be able to hold elections. Um, Añez had announced yesterday that they were hoping to hold elections by mid to late January. And that's what's going to be really critical to restoring confidence and trust in the system. Uh, I concede that Morales from Mexico will be trying to rile up his supporters. He will be stating that he's going to be making a comeback. Um, but that's going to create instability because for the moment, there's a large portion of the population that is fed up with him and fed up with the fact that he violated the 2009 Constitution and then engineered a fourth term in office. So the big hope for Bolivia is that they can somehow gain stability in this interim period by announcing that the elections are going to take place and then that will gain public trust. 
Do you see any chance that Morales will stage a comeback? I mean, he still has quite a following. He does, and I think it's definitely likely he is going to stage a comeback. It's just a matter of when. And and it's more likely to be successful if he just waits and bides his time a little bit um, and then allows this next election to play out and then tries to come back. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a huge mess if he tries to come back too soon. Well, okay, let's look at the bigger picture here. Bolivia is having a crisis, obviously. There's an uprising, though, also in neighboring Chile. Ecuador and Honduras are experiencing unrest. How concerned should we be about this instability in Latin America? It's, it's very concerning, but this has been a problem that Latin America has faced for decades because they have incredibly huge gaps between rich and poor, as we see in Chile. Uh, you have very personalistic style of rule. You have very weak parties. And you have very low levels of trust, of political trust, of trust in one another. And this is a recipe for a lot of instability. And we've seen this over and over again, where there have been cycles of dictatorship, followed by a little bit of democracy, and then followed by instability. It's actually had been a really democratic period uh, for Latin America. And so the hopes are with this particular uh, instance in Bolivia, if they can restore stability quickly, move towards democracy, that could be a model for other countries. Professor, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Natasha Lynch, that professor of government at Essex University.